Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So today we're going to continue our flower painting journey and we're going to do it in the style of Matisse. You see these beautiful black lines? He did a lot of drawings like this, but we're going to add a little color in ours. Very simple, splotches of color, almost like a doodle, but create a really beautiful and lovely floral in a vase. Yes, I go over this step by step. No need to worry about having a trace or anything. If you can draw a little simple flower, you can paint this beautiful painting. This, this look, this minimalistic look is really, really popular right now in all the stores you can see. it. And I'm just going to teach you about going about painting something like this. If you have any questions, please leave in the comment section. Um, you know, tell me if it's something you like. I think it's good to teach you all different types of ways to paint and draw so that you can figure out your creative journey. And this is actually a fantastic exercise if you stumped on what to paint in your sketchbook. This is something you need to do, like how to study flowers or fruits or whatever. And you just paint them simply and do a whole series of this. And it's just going to help you grow more and more as an artist and be more creative. Like I said, if you have any questions, leave in the comment section. Also check out my Patreon. I have ad-free videos, traceables, exclusive tutorials, and a live stream on the top tier. It's just a place people go and support my channel, which I super appreciate. You can check it out right here Boop, in a second. And I do longer uh, videos there with traceables and on the live stream, really have you guys ask me questions and answer some of the questions that you have at watercolor and we can talk about different things and techniques to use. So without further ado, Let's get painting. Okay, for this tutorial, let's go over supplies. I'm using Arsh 100% cotton hot press paper. It's the hot press paper pad. You can use whatever hot press you want or cold press. You can use cold press. Um, you don't really need to have expensive paper for this tutorial. This is a cheap paper tutorial if you want to use cheap paper. Perfect exercise for that and then getting you used to all that stuff. I'll be using a Princeton 8 long round for the, the black outline and the number 10 just to fill in some color. So I don't know if you know that Matisse does a lot of, or did, I'm sorry, he's no longer with us, did a lot of amazing line work. There's some uh, references here of some like sketches that he had, these beautiful botanicals. And you see in here, like the sketches, this thick and thin lines, right? And same thing with his florals here. Really simple florals. Now we talked about florals in my last week's tutorial. So I'm gonna link it in this um, the tutorial here and below in the description so that you can go so you can see how I talk about drawing flowers and creating flowers. And using that tutorial with this tutorial will help you really get into the whole looseness of it. So once you have the basic shapes, it's pretty easy. See how you did thick and thin lines and basic outlines of like a vase, just kind of peeking out through here. Really simple kind of look, but very, very, very effective and really cool. And here you get more painterly with the paint. That was, I think that was a painting also, but here it's a little thicker, you see. And you know, some people would say, if you didn't know this was Matisse, you would say, oh, this is an art student just learning whatever. No, <laughs> this is Matisse. <laughs> And it's amazing. So you can do tons of things like this. And you, if you think that this is juvenile, it's not. It's very artistic, very creative. And then again, here's more line drawing type looks. All right. I already pre-did one earlier, but of course I like to do things live. So we're going to do something different one. So here I'm just putting in basic color in the background and kind of did some loose, simple line work on the flowers. So what you do for this is that you paint the color first and then you go back in with the line work. Now there's different ways to approach this. You could just paint colors all around and then just go in and do line work so it's kind of more abstract in a way because it's the colors just haphazardly painted in the background and then you go into the flowers. Or you can do what I'm doing here is that I just penciled in first kind of where I would like my flowers to be and then I did the splotches of some colors. I didn't do pencil over here, but I figured I penciled like an area here. I have a flower here and then the vase I penciled in. And that's what we're going to do today. This is really, really, really a great thing to do if you're like really trying to study flowers. 
if you just buy a bouquet of flowers and just kind of loosely paint them as you see them like this, it's just really going to help you creatively, you know, and so I'm saying there's different ways to go about painting flowers that don't necessarily have to be realistic and bleeding, what and what, you know, and you can create some amazing stuff like this. I mean, just, you'll see stuff like this all over the stores right now. You'll see this in Hobby Lobby, Michael's, Pottery Barn. Uh, anthropology this line work like Matisse type of line work is very popular you could do a really big painting like this and give it as a gift frame it for a friend even if you didn't do the colors if you just did the black and white part of it or even on craft paper you know gray or cream or any of that stuff or if you did it on black paper and did all this in white see all the ideas I'm giving you this is what's hot right now out in the all, all over the stores and you can create something fantastic and someone would think you had bought it at you know home goods and um, hobby lab or one of these places so and it's yours so let me show you how to do this so basically you know i think you pretty much have all driven, drawn a vase i'm just going to draw a vase and it can be a round shape or tall i'm going to make a taller one this time a little different different kind of vase just like a tall so let's Cylindrical vase. Ooh, I can't speak. <laughs> Cylinder vase. So it's more of like a rectangle. Kind of goes down, curves in the bottom. You can put the table in too. You could have some blooms kind of on the table. And then if you want to show the stems, show the stems. But I'm not because I want a pattern in the actual vase like I did in the other one. So then I'm just going to figure I'm going to have a flower here. And probably another flower here. See the daisies I just put a yellow blotch and then I just painted in the daisies and so figure out where I'm going to put the big flowers I can kind of hang them all over here all right and then you're going to figure what colors you want to do now I did really pretty pink blushes and yellows and pinks and then this like light turquoisey green color which is pretty it could be a little bit brighter than that um, but I'm going to kind of keep it in the muted tones so I'm just going to have to paint some colors I'm thinking what color I want the vase it could all just be black and white by the way you don't even have to have color but I just want to show you so I'm going in and making more I mean now I'll make some more orange tones here orange hot tones again but not so pinky pinky sweet sweet you know a little more warmer like hot so I got some orange here I'm just gonna put that color see I'm just kind of wiggling like a little blotch it's almost like a doodle in a way and then I'll put some down here I think I'm in a variety of my variety and then so think of Matisse when you think of Matisse I love his jazz cutouts and some of the we did a Matisse type of um, painting I'll link that one here also it's watercolor it was a little thicker watercolor so this is just watered down this is what I mean by using cheaper paper. You don't have to really use expensive paper. Now you can make those blotches bigger or smaller. Now I've got this just nice pretty orange. I'm going to get a little bit deeper with this now. Let's get some deeper color here. I've used magenta. Before I had, um, that was bright rose. And now I'm going to add magenta with this. Okay, come on. <laughs> Doesn't want to play. A little deeper reddish orange. I mean, you can have so much fun. Now I'm actually going over my pencil. I didn't even actually do the area that my pencil is in. That looks a little too... I'm going to get this more orange color. And how do you figure out what colors to use? What colors work best? People have asked me this before. Well, you can start with the basics. So in color theory, we have the, the primary colors. You know, we have red, blue, and yellow. And then you make the secondary colors. And then we have like the warm colors and the cool colors. These are all warm colors right now. Reds, yellows, orange, pinks, all that kind of tones. And the cool colors are the blues, the greens, the purples, et cetera, et cetera. So for the flowers, you could have a combination of all of it. But for this exercise, I'm doing like warm tones. So I've got the red, I mean, excuse me, the orange with a little bit of red and I got yellows. So I'm gonna put some yellow in here too. Oop, little thread and that's a lot brighter than the other ones and I'm doing some much more blooms than I did in the first one but 
That's what I'm saying. You can just go crazy doing different things here. And I'm mixing all the colors. Why not? Get a little one up in here. Mm. And I'm not going to do any of the yellow, yellow one hanging down here somewhere. All right. And then for greens. Well, I had that turquoisey green, but I don't really think that really would go well. See how these two colors kind of just don't play nice together. And I can just eliminate that. A nice, here's a cobalt. We'll try the cobalt. You know, cobalt with yellow makes like a muted sagey kind of green. Let's see if I like that. I might want a brighter green. Play around with it. So you see, I can see the two colors next to each other right now without even putting them on the, over there. Not bad. Go back and add some peacock blue. Peacock is like turquoise. If you don't have peacock, think of turquoise blue. Turquoise mixed with yellow. It's going to be nice and bright. It's a bright color. We got a little brown right next to it. It's a good olive. Yeah, I like that better. I love mixing all the colors on my palette sometimes. Those look nice together. All right. So then just think of leaves. Where would leaves go? Just kind of, you can put them in the splotches, a little more pointy like a leaf. Whatever floats your boat. I just did a pointy one. And just kind of splotchy here. Simple as that. They look like nothing right now, don't they? <laughs> and then the vase. I'm, I'm actually, now see, I'm intuitively going for like this nice, soft, all kind of pastel-y colors. By the way, pastels are really hot right now. So I'm into trends setting, forecasting, all that stuff. And pastels are going to be the biggest thing. So if you're looking to give a gift to somebody with your watercolors, muted pastels with this kind of line look is really big. You'll see them in the stores. All right. I'm thinking I would do a blue. Because Matisse always did. Look at those bright. I can't do as bright. So here's a cobalt. I'll water it down a little bit. And I'll add a little Payne's Gray. Just to dull it a little bit. I don't want to keep it too bright because, like I said, I was just keeping with this soft kind of tone theme. Just fill it all in. So obviously you know it's a vase. <laughs> you can get a little touched brighter if you want to. See, I'm going to add a little bit of brightness on the side here. But we're not doing a whole watercolor about painting a vase. We're just doing simple cylinder type shape and then we'll fill it in. And then for the table, any color you want. It could be a uh, gray. I'm going to do a grayish brown here. I think I'm going to do gray. Or you could do a bright color. Or you could do a pattern. It's up to you. Um, I'm going to do gray. Just kind of loosely sticking that color around. Something with this paper. Maybe I touch the paper. Sometimes when you touch paper, by the way, keep your hands off the papers, really good papers, because the oils of your hands create like a resist on the paper, and you don't want to do that. Sorry. Just going to keep that loose. Maybe I'll make it a little bit darker on the right side for shadow. But we're not getting technical here. It's just really kind of a simple painting. Okay. This is the point where you say, stop. Let it dry, and then we come back in. We're going to use an eight long round just with the Payne's Gray color and make this whole kind of fun, loose, funky Matisse style painting. All right, so I'll dry. So why I don't want you doing like varieties of like shading? Because you want that kind of flat look that you would see in the drawings or some of his paintings. So I'm just going to really just loosen up this Payne's Gray, but I really want to keep it thick, almost like gouache. And if you have black gouache, use that. That actually works better. So I'm just showing if you don't have it. You have Payne's Gray. See how like it's super thick. This is like butter. This is the butter. And this is why I use a hot press because it moves smoother on the hot press than it would on cold press. It's going to be like more paint. Less paint on the hot press. So we can just start off thinking about a rose or some kind of flower up here. I'll start off doing like maybe a little circle and then just kind of build these leaves on the out, out, of, out of the circle up and wiggle down and see they're breaking 
which is great. Push down in some areas and just touch it on the tip with some areas and you get that thick and thin, thick and thin line. See that? And then you can do another layer next to it, behind it, and you're building the flower. You see how I'm just wiggling the brush, using the tip, pushing down, and you're creating, you can do little lines in here. See that? You're creating all this kind of fun stuff. There's your funky flower. Now you can offset that color too. What I mean by that? You can start the flower over here, go out of that color that you painted. They could just be big flowers like this. There's little lines in them. Nothing super special. You see how it's offset? It's not filled in. All right. And then think of other flowers. He shows really kind of simple stuff. Look at that. Simple, simple. A kind of a goofy, almost like a tulip, but not really. Same thing here. Some little teeny ditzy ones in here. You know, all that good stuff. I could do that little side flower. It's kind of open in the middle, and then you can do little ditzy lines here. So it could be like an open peony or something like that and little leaves here I'm sorry petals and then there's that big flower here just play around you can do like little star in the center bigger petals kind of underlapping overlapping see how they're not all perfect kind of broken smaller here then you get bigger ones here and I offset some of that this is super fun it's a doodle basically um yeah and you can do some daisies if you want it's like a little daisy i'll do see it's offset off that yellow but the yellow indicates that it's a daisy thick and thin lines so i like this brush you can push down and you get that thicker color i mean excuse me the thicker thickness <laughs> thicker color now and let's do another daisy kind of offset here from the yellow look at that really make a big little skinny ones there I mean I love this look you're gonna see this in the stores now you, now that I've shown you this you're gonna be walking around going oh I see it now oops put that little line here do like an inside they don't even have to look like specific type flowers we can try that funky flower that he had see and I would do like one going downward like he had here just going downward facing downward and keep that paint consistency a little thick and a little stem here and then they have another flower here figure out hmm, what kind of flower I'm looking at some of his flowers just kind of simple you can just do like a little thicker black dot center and then just go out and make some kind of fun petals on that one we haven't done the leaves yet we're still playing around with flowers here I'm gonna do dark center on this one too little lines just get some little detail It's fun. <laughs> You're like, no, Ellen, I don't like it. Okay. So then for leaves, just kind of wiggle and put some little veins in there. They can be off center also. They don't have to have the wiggle. They can be more, you know, straight lined. You can just have leaves kind of like going like that and kind of out like this. Don't have to be perfect. And then we start adding some stems. Here's a leaf here. Again, off center on this one, I'll add two leaves. Already, I'm loving this. I'm telling you, you're going to notice this stuff now that I'm talking about this in the stores. So, here we're going to do the vase. Still haven't finished the leaves. Going to go in the vase. And the vase, the vase is definitely not like on the color, it's off a little bit. I'm going to start adding the stems now. A couple lines going down. And then we could add, now you can say you could add more green here or not have green here. So I'm thinking I might 
I might because I didn't put a green in here. You can stop at this point and go in and just add, maybe add some green. Of course, I'll have to wait till that dries. And I'm going to add a little yellow little guy over here. And I'll fill that in. So I'll work in the vase while that dries in the background. So just here we go. Thick and thin lines. Thick to go thin. You're pushing down, pulling back. Vase. Let's do a pattern in the vase. What can we do? Some lines. Lines up here. Maybe some zigzaggy kind of things. You know, do you have vases around your house that have patterns? Go look at the patterns on them and just kind of duplicate them really kind of simply. Uh, I'm thinking about the same thing I had before, like little vines with just little leaves on them. You could do a vase with someone's face on it, like, a, you know, like the Grecian vase. Here, I'm going to go like this. You know, all that line work you see in all the pottery, the Grecian pottery, it's kind of similar to that. That's what we're kind of creating here, but in a painting. So when you're doing watercolor, it doesn't always have to be something that you want to paint that looks exactly like the object. You want to use the medium in all different ways. And this is just one of them. So I'm just doing little vines. You can have a little flower kind of peeking out on the side here. And maybe do a little flower here. And then down the bottom, I can do some more doodads. Put some dots in them. Have fun with the patterns. Play around with that. Little lines coming down here. And then at this point, it can go in here because I think these are dry. Make those lines. And then I have like a little yellow here. I wanted to make a small, tiny flower. And then add the stems to the flowers so they're not just floating. Connect them. Follow through where they connect. And you can actually, cut, you know, paint in some of the actual stems in black if you want. Get those leaves in there and the stems. Look, how much time did that take? <laughs> I love it. Now, you could do a pattern on the table, too. Seriously, you can go crazy. It looks nice and simple. You could do another pattern on the table. I don't know what, I would think about it. Um, I'm gonna make this a little thicker. Make the lines a little thicker. More interesting. I don't know if I will do that. Maybe you wanna do the pattern on the table, not in the Matisse black water that color down you can be a little creative and just make it a pale gray and add just a pattern on the table so it's a tablecloth with a pattern this is where you get a little creative right see take your watercolor to a whole nother level it doesn't have to be like i said painting subjects that are just perfect, the more creative you get with your mediums, the more you'll figure out what kind of artist you want to be. Expressive, realistic, all that fun stuff. See, I like that. I'm not touching the background. I don't want to go there. But really, how much time did this take? Minimal time. It's like a nice little doodle. And the masters did this. This is what they did. This is how they studied flowers and landscapes. You could do this with the landscape, the same technique, do it with the landscape. I'm gonna put some, just needed something over here. I can just do a simple greenery that didn't have the color behind it, just with the black color. Going back in here and adding some of that. But you know, this is what they did. They studied, this is a perfect kind of thing to do in your sketchbook also. So the flowers don't have to have color. Neither does just putting some open greenery. 
No, mine's a little crowded in this one, but that's okay. And you can get a little more detail if you want. I kind of want to keep it super simple though. It's the look I was going for. Don't want to fuss too much. And like I said, you can make some of the lines really thick, some of them thin. It makes it more interesting for a painting. There you go. So different ways to do it, right? You can just put a whole color on the background. This one's more, much more pale, soft, you know, pastel. This one has a little more color vibrancy. I like them both, but I actually like the second one better. <laughs> Believe it or not. And then we'll go in here. Just add a couple little more doodads. But I think we're done. So let me know if you like this technique. If you um, let me know if you actually see it in the stores because I'm curious to see if you've seen this. Now you might not see with the color behind it. You might see all black and white or on like a craft color paper. But you can do it all varying ways. Color, no color, black and white, craft paper, no craft paper all that great stuff and it'd be a great gift to give somebody for valentine's day <laughs> or birthday anything so thank you guys so much for stopping by my channel if you haven't subscribed please subscribe and if you haven't hit that bell notification button please do so so you know my tutorial is up i hope you have a great weekend take care and i'll speak to you soon